Let's let a younger me tell you about Midsummer. Oi! My name is not Sven, it is Martin. Yeah. Yes, several years ago I made a video about Midsummer, so I thought why not reuse that video and let you guys experience a much younger Martin in his prime talking about my favorite holiday of the year, Midsummer. Here you go. <laughs> Glad midsummer, happy midsummer. Welcome to Midsummer's Eve celebrations here in Sweden. So midsummer is a typical European uh, event, and it is celebrated differently depending on where in Europe it is. It has this really the strongest um, set of celebration in Sweden because we have not Swedes have not adopted the um, the merge between the pre-Christian era and the Christian era, so we don't celebrate uh, prophets and stuff like that. So the celebration is really that of the entry of summer which is combined at the same time as the summer solstice when the sun is at its highest and it was said that around the time when the sun was started to you know turn south uh, that magic was in the air and the, the way that we interpreted that in Sweden was that we would dance around a pole that looked like uh, like this uh, and it was said that it was a very fertile age and it was a good thing to be born in uh, March or April because that meant that your parents had sex on Midsummer. What people would do on Midsummer's Eve, they would pick seven different kinds of flowers and they would put them under their pillow and the idea was that you would then dream about the future spouse that you were you know, gonna marry. And there was a certain way of how you pick the flowers because you had to cross over a fence, a typical type of fence, pick one flower, pass over another fence, pick one flower, and once you have picked all the flowers, the seven flowers, or nine flowers in some cases, you had to be quiet. You couldn't not say a word until you went to bed and you placed them under your pillow. And then hopefully you had a dream about that person and not someone else. So the maypole would be raised and it would just be cloth in green and flowers and you would dance around and singing songs about little frogs. So Midsummer is one of the big traditions in Sweden. It's also one of the few that aren't connected directly to Christianity. The other one being Valborg, which we celebrate on the last day of April. And traditionally with uh, Midsummer in other countries, they would burn a big fire, but we do that uh, to burn all old leaves and we do that on Valborg. Another important tradition when it comes to Midsummer is the food, where we eat sauced herring, meatballs, new potatoes, and uh, we drink the snaps and we sing the snaps songs, and many people get quite drunk, which in turn makes the dreaming part where you put the flowers on the pillow interesting. And of course, the most important probably when it comes to the celebration, aside from the herring and the new potatoes and the meatballs, the strawberry. So people turn up to these events where you have the maypole and you would dance around in one or two or three rings depending on how big the, the actual event uh, is. And then you sing songs and you do specific dancing. Some people are dressed in folk costumes, uh, but it's a great uh, thing for you know, the kids and the family. Yeah, that was me a couple of years ago uh, telling you about Midsummer. If you want to follow the Swedish language on Instagram, you really should because I talk about Swedish culture and Swedish language and I do daily stuff and I answer questions that you post to me there. So why not go over and follow that too? To get all the Swedishness, all the Swedishness after, you know, the jumping frogs and the upside down penis and all that. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you the next time you click on one of my videos. Bye.